What's up, everybody? It's Bear with BearIndependent.com. Also, don't tell anybody, but CEO of Refuge Medical. And uh, it's National Preparedness Month. Preparedness! And uh, today, in an effort for National Preparedness Month, September, we're going to break some tourniquets. Yeah, we are. Can you get it? It's those indentations on the... It seems to be holding. It does. A lot of deflection, but it's not, not breaking. breaking. Hook and loop's not separating either. Mm -mm. I love the hook and loop on it. I think those indentations be there. Oh. Wow, it's deflection not breaking. <coughs> you gotta get the strap all the way in the seat back. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dang, you really have to work with it. I, the question is, is, can you do that with a cat? The other weak point is, you know, my arm would give before that centerpiece did. <laughs> yeah. My arm would give. Yeah. That's not nothing. That's not nothing. That's definitely reaching on. Let me see that sucker. That's, that's no dice right there. Yeah, that thing just said no felts, you're not breaking me. Now you guys are just ratcheting on it over and over again. It's going to give out at some point. Well, you got to find its failure point. Yeah. <laughs> If your medical training company doesn't do this to tourniquets to test if they actually are, you know, indestructible, then find a different one. I don't know, man. It's taking it. It is. <sighs> what is your grip strength, Bear Nation? Yeah. <laughs> National preparedness. Yeah, you see the discoloration of the plastic when you bend it, but it's breaking. Yeah, you also have to realize, like, what realistic expectation can you give to your tourniquet? Like, I like how Bob was frantically searching for these and now we're destroying it in the parking lot. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was frantically searching for them. And is it repairable? Here, guys, use this. <laughs> That'll get the job. Hold it, you know, folks. <laughs> is it chainsaw proof? <laughs> So this one is what used to be the recon, and now it's the rhino, right down to the little pen in the thing. The little pen that works great in the thing. This is why we put Sharpies in our kits. Yeah, something about pens and writing on fabric. But it works, I mean, look at the yep. back of my hand. 100%. These work. They're not as robust as a Gen 7 cat or a soft tee, but they do work. Um, I've got some in my truck over the uh, visors. Yep. But that's that's their brand. That's the Rhino tourniquet. This does also slip back and forth. Right. And if it's up like this, you're gonna have a hell of a time twisting mm, that. Interesting. I will say that the cat can do the same thing. It is harder to have the cat move do through that. the Kevlar band. Yeah. Do they have little ridges on the cast? I'll tell you what, the take these to class and beat the shit out of them yeah. and see what they do. The reason it does that easier than it does on the cat is because this is more flexible than on the cat. Yeah. Which is twofold. One of the reasons the cat won't work on a really small limb is because, because it doesn't. It doesn't flex like this. So, pros and cons, right? But, You're still dealing with a limited amount of Velcro even if you do wrap it around a limb that big. But I mean, have you ever actually put a tourniquet on before though? <laughs> yeah. Just a hundred times, times this week. <laughs> <laughs> right, there it is, Rhino Rescue. Right there. Yeah, so that's two, there's two fold issues here. One, we know that North American Rescue produces a majority of their tourniquets in other places, but we know that this is produced in China, um, and we know that all their paperwork is in China, which is probably the main reason they haven't been sued thus far by North American Rescue. We know Recon um, 
they had an issue and they actually went out of business. North America Rescue sued them out of existence. And that's for patent infringement. And to be fair, it's intellectual property, Yeah, right? 100%. Now, one of the things was, is a lot of this resembles a patent on the cat tourniquet that's a later gen and that patent is now expired right if i believe so question mark question mark right so recon had a similar issue so whether this is going to be in existence in a year i mean could go either way so um, the, the thing is like this is not a chinese oh. knockoff of a genuine cat tourniquet correct it is something different but is it something different enough to stand up to you know in a court of law for patent infringement maybe not right and is it different enough from the cheap chinese knockoffs that it won't break i mean initial testing it doesn't look like it's gonna break right but uh i wouldn't use this one because we just beat the crap out of it but if we had a new version of the version of these i would trust it right um based off of what we just did um i but, mean i wouldn't carry it i want to see more testing to carry it but i mean looking at it right now there's no reason for me to think that in a single application as a tourniquet that this would fail and these definitely work yeah. Th this one here definitely works yeah. and that's just what you here go ahead look at that yeah that's just what used to be the recon tourniquet it's got the aluminum windlass on it you know plastic c-clip time tab the whole nine but these are what got recon in trouble with cat Right. So the fact that Rhino is now producing them and or bought all the back stock that existed, Possible. started another business. Oh yeah, we're not Recon anymore, we're Rhino now. I don't know, I don't know the details on it. They do work, but um, for a hot minute, you couldn't find the Recons. Yeah. Um, but I mean, look, I mean. Yeah, look at the coloration, you can see. Yeah, they work. I've definitely got arterial restriction, so. Dude, yeah, this hurt. Ow! I had that one on for what five minutes. It's nothing. Come to class. Go run around in Responder Three with one on your leg for a half an hour. You forget it's there. Yeah, if you can remember that there's a tourniquet on your leg in Responder Three, our instructors aren't doing their jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. That is the truth. And they're yeah. very good at their jobs. Yeah. So there's a little initial testing on the the Rhino TQs. Like I said, this one is a recon just with a different name. It doesn't even have anything printed on the back right. plate. It's just a recon by another name. That other one, this, this one, one does. is their particular type Rhino Rescue. That is the only color they make of that too. They but make just that coyote. This is way closer to a Gen 7 though. Yeah, oh yeah, way, it's I way could, closer. I could see Nar having a, a couple of complaints about this one. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's also interesting to note, like. That right there is already starting to work up. Yep. So time will tell. Something else we noticed was that the stitching, let me see your cat. Mike, I have a soft tee on me right now. <laughs> there we go. There's my soft tee. If you look There's at the cat. stitching oh, on yeah. these, the stitching on this is wider. Mm-hmm. This is more comparable to a Gen 7, but the stitching on the Recon is wider than a normal Recon. Fewer stitches per inch. Yeah. Cool. It's but cheaper yeah, to make. There, there's a, a Recon branded one right there. Right, I mean, look, they're- They're the same tourniquet. They're freaking identical. Yeah, the only difference is one doesn't have a Recon on it. Yeah, this one is stamped Recon Medical on the back. Designed in California, assembled in China. This one has no stampings on the back plate. But I mean, look at the look at the windlass. And I think one of the main things is is that these are being quote unquote designed in China, um, and that's that's how they're getting around it. I don't, I'm not sure. It could be that just NAR has been so busy that their legal team hasn't been like, oh, let's go to court. Well, who knows what they have in the works as well? Right. You yeah. Know? They and could. They, a lawsuit could drop tomorrow. Something else I'm just noticing about this. So if you keep a, a tourniquet on your visor like I do. Uh huh. Um, and you live south of a certain <laughs> latitude, you're going to um, see the, the glue starts to soften up. Yep. And then if you catch that Velcro on anything, it just comes off, yep. right? They put a plastic ridge around the edge of the Velcro here. Yep. That's yeah. actually pretty cool. Yeah, so I, I really like the hook mm. and loop on this time Hold tab. On. It's completely different yeah. um, versus standard hook and loop. This is raised up yeah. uh, and it's like your traditional Velcro. This is almost a plastic 
hook and loop here. Yeah, so when they have a type of Velcro that's got basically a hook and hook. It's yeah. two, uh, two firm plastics instead yep. of a fuzz in a plastic. Um, this is closer to that. Um, yeah. Less of a hook hook and more of a plastic press. Frame. Yeah, here you can see yeah. how the adhesive separates yep. on the time tab. That come off of my dash. Yeah. But I feel like this little lip might help those mm -hmm. edges stay in. That was a primary concern about these. Yep. Now, it works as a tourniquet. And, and that's a recon. Correct. And if I had to, right, like I can get that across there and it'll work. Yep. But, you know, when seconds count, yeah, you can see it's stamped recon. You know, recon on the back plate right there. And these... Under stress, if yep. this is hanging out over here, yep. you may have trouble with that. Well, let's... It's a concern. Let's do it. Three seconds. Six seconds. Hurry up, you're dying. Hurry up. You're crying. Tighter than you think you should be. Alright, so it's about 14, 15 seconds there. I wasn't really in a hurry either. Yeah. I also I actually failed. Mm -hmm. And uh instructor Phelps didn't get in my face and spray me with the hose. Ooh, okay. We're okay. <laughs> what we do in private is you our really business, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I know where my bread is buttered. <laughs> That's a uh, smart man. Right <laughs> yeah, so these were made in 2020. Right here. This one. And that's a tourniquet that was made in 2020 and then sat in the sun its pretty much whole existence on a visor, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Took it out of the plastic, put it on a visor. But yeah, that's, it is an issue with the recon tourniquets because I mean, look. Yeah. Right? You can see the glue just peeling off. In a, uh, in a real world though, we're not even going to take these off. A medical professional would yeah, cut this off at right a hospital, but it is a thing. And also look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that fray. Can I get you some new tourniquets? Uh, do you know where to get any? I just, uh, I don't know. Look if at, only... Ooh, look at that. Holy. Let's do that one more time. Let's see. Hang on, brother, you're dying. Ah! Oh! Oh! There it is. Time for some new tourniquets. Time for some new tourniquets. Luckily, luckily, I know... I know where to get them. Oh my gosh, look, look at that. that. Look There's at that. Look, look at the that. beard out of the way. Yeah, this is a luscious beard. <laughs> oh. And so, is UV damage on a tourniquet a thing? Yeah, it's yeah, a I'd, thing. I'd say it's a thing. Hey man, I was using that. Yeah, well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, so. But what are we going to do with that? Though? Oh my gosh, maybe Crack just, pipe? Maybe. Maybe Will a one work? a one hitter for the weed we don't sell. <laughs> <laughs> You know what we should do? We should take this to class and we should show people why UV damage is a thing. Hey, I know who I could give that to. Oh my gosh, if only, if only there was a guy. There you go. Cool. I'm going to go get you some orange tourniquets. All right. Well, praise y'all. Rhino tourniquets, recon tourniquets, tourniquets. Shalom.